To start the connector editor, click the Edit button on the left side toolbar. To create a new connector file, click on the New Connector button, then click on the big Fully Custom button. Now enter the class name, which is the abbreviated name of the connector type, such as DB25 or CN36. Here we'll enter AX16 for a fictitious 16-pin connector. Now we specify whether the connector has a shell connection and also its gender. Note that the identifier and name fields are automatically filled in at this point. You can change these items if you wish. Note also that the unique identifier is used by CableEye to identify the cable and also becomes the file name of the connector. Therefore, it must be unique across your installation. In this example, we'll be embedding a graphic file for the connector shell drawing. Click on Custom Graphic and then the Import button. CableEye supports bitmap, JPEG, and PNG graphic formats. We suggest the PNG format because they can contain an alpha channel and that lets you delete background images from the displayed drawing. Typically, images taken from a digital camera will be quite large, larger than will fit well on a cable drawing. For most applications, we recommend an image width of no larger than 240 pixels. You can automatically reduce the size of the embedded drawing by clicking on the scale button. This affects the embedded drawing itself. The original graphic file is left intact. Now just click on the big create button to create your new connector source file. There are two sets of pins for this style of graphic. The pinout pins on the right side of the drawing are used to connect wiring to. The position of these pins is controlled by cable eye. The pins currently shown at the bottom are the reference pins which need to be positioned over the connector. We'll be working with these pins. But first we'll need to change the pin labels. In this connector, pins are designated by letter rather than number. So we'll change the labels now. Now we'll position the reference pins over the connector cavities. The easiest way to do this is with the auto drop function. Click the auto drop button and then click the first item that you want to place. In this case, we click on the shell connection, then click on the location in the drawing at which to position the item. Note that the next pin, pin A, is automatically selected. So go to the location for pin A and click there. Continue this process for all pins. You are selecting approximate locations only. Don't worry if the placement isn't quite right. We'll go back later and adjust the pin positions. However, if you're really off target, click on the errant pin to reselect it, and then click on a better location. Then continue selecting the rest of the pin locations. When you select the last pin location, the connector automatically exits auto drop mode. You can adjust a pin's position by clicking on it and then using the arrow keys to fine tune the placement. If your mouse has a scroll wheel, rolling it forward or backward will move the selected pin vertically. If it's also a tilt wheel, you can likewise move the selected pin horizontally. On this connector, the pin cavities are clearly labeled so the labels provided by CableEye are redundant. You can hide them by unchecking the boxes in the Show Label column of the Editor Grid. Click on the Single Floppy Disk button to save the source file only. Click on the Multiple Floppy Disk button to save the source and also create the connector file that will be seen by the rest of the CableEye program. You can now exit the editor and immediately use the new connector file that you have added to the library.